In our previous lesson, you learned to differentiate the epicenter of an earth from its focus, intensity of an earthquake from its magnitude, and active fault and inactive fault. If you haven't watched it yet, you can pause this video and watch it for better understanding of our lesson. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. When you are in lower grade, you learn that Earth is composed of four layers, namely crust, mantle, inner core, and outer core. The crust as the outermost layer is much more familiar to us and was comprehensively studied by our scientists. But how about the mantle and the core? Has anybody been there and collected data about it? The answer is no. Nobody had gone as deep as mantle. So how do you think the earth layers were discovered and illustrated when nobody has seen it? We often considered earthquakes as a problem, a scary disaster we are always afraid of. But did you know that it had also helped our scientists discover what's deep in the earth? The earth is made up of various components, the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Each part is further divided into more detailed parts that show its distinct features. Crust is the thinnest layer of the earth, built from rock and mineral solid. Mantle is made up of molten iron and silicate rocks. It lies between the core and the crust. Outer core composed of iron and nickel. It is the only layer of liquid. And we have inner core, that spins faster than the surface of the earth. The inner core's temperature is extremely hot. As you know by now, when a fault suddenly moves, an earthquake is generated. The shaking starts from the focus and spread out. You can get an idea of how this happens by throwing a pebble into a pond. See the ripples that move out in the circles? The vibrations of the focus are something like that. The vibrations are more properly called seismic waves. When we say seismic waves, these are the vibrations after the release of energy from within the Earth. As seismic waves travel through the body of the Earth, they behave in different ways depending on what they encounter along the way. For example, as seismic waves travel deeper into the crust, they speed up. That means that at depth, the rocks are denser. In the upper part of the mantle, the waves slow down. That means that the rocks there are partially molten. As the waves reach the core, one kind of seismic wave the S-wave disappears. That means that the outer core is liquid. At certain depths, the waves are reflected and refracted. That means that the earth must be layered. These earthquake waves give us a picture of the earth's interior, the way an ultrasound provides an image of a baby inside the womb. This is why scientists know a bit about the interior of our home planet, even if no one has gone deep into the earth. There are two types of earthquake waves. We have surface wave and body waves. Surface waves holds two forms, love waves and Rayleigh waves. These two traveled only on the surface of the earth. Over time, their velocity decreases instantly with time. They cause most of the environmental damages. Primary waves or the P waves and secondary waves or S waves are the two types of body waves. The primary waves or P waves are like compression and move in longitudinal direction. P waves travel faster and reach the destination first through solid and liquids. Secondary waves or S waves are transverse or in shear motion. S waves travel slower. This goes only through solid, not through liquid. 
Thus, if there is an earthquake, the first waves that arrive are P waves. The gap in P wave and S wave arrival gives a first estimate of the distance to the earthquake.